uh, in a certain alphabetical order, order with company that starts with A or I last. Uh, so our own, uh, our own Lucas Ulo, Senior Director of Science and Technology, right behind me, is going to talk about recovery of nutrients from agricultural derived waste stream. Lucas? Well, at the beginning, we have to introduce a URI, so we go to the next slide. And of course, uh, we are on a URI event, so I'm like the flight attendant explaining how to use the the seat, the belt in a plane full of frequent flyers. So we can probably not go in a lot of detail about that. But let me talk about uh, um, a nutrient recovery. So to grow to grow plants, you need uh, nutrients. Uh, obviously, we are focusing mostly on the three macronutrients nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium, and decay, but this challenge is open to any type of plant nutrients. And uh, I was really prompted by an observation that uh, came up of the work we have done in the last year in looking at the decarbonization of the, um, uh, the fertilizer supply chain, that um, if we could recover all of the NPK um, that, uh, that comes from waste stream in the state of Minnesota, and this was a USDA study of a couple of years ago. We could su we could supplant thirty percent of the uh, we could supplant thirty percent of the demand of synthetic fertilizer in the states. I want also to make a, a clear statement here. I'm not against synthetic fertilizer. I'm a chemical engineer and think Haber Bosch is one of the greatest crowning achievement of the twentieth century chemistry. Half of the people in this room are alive because of Aber Bosch. So not uh, you never find me poo pooing uh, Aber Bosch. However, uh, however, is all uh, is about efficiency. And as a chemical engineer, I also like efficiency. And uh, both from a point of view of uh, materials and economics, there is a, we have estimated that uh, again the USDA has estimated there is about two hundred more than two hundred million dollars worth of nutrients that literally go down in the drain. And they actually cause, then cause some damage. So the challenge here is, is looking at technologies that can be deployed to recover these nutrients. And take me wrong, this is not a new sector, but the focus that in our challenge is really looking at recovery and reuse and not just removal. So if I look at the wastewater treatment wall, there is plenty of technology that they can remove phosphorus, they can remove nitrogen, but typically there is not a focus on on recovering and, re and, uh, and reuse. The focus is in removal, so then we can meet the, the regulatory constraints before discharge. And so we are looking for, challenge for technologies that can help recovering the nutrients coming from either waste stream, but sometimes also coming on before uh, the material gets, uh, becomes waste. For instance, today there is some type of feeds that might contain phosphorus a lot. And, uh, and sometimes some animals are fed with more phosphorus than what is needed for the metabo uh, uh, metabolism. Nothing wrong to the animal, just the phosphorus goes for a ride, comes on the other side. And now we have to try to, mon to check the phosphorus in a lot of uh, dispersed source. So again, if we could recover that phosphorus in the front end, we, we could probably uh, mitigate the problem. So the focus is recovery, uh, reuse, and, rec and recovery obviously uh, ideally, in a chemical format that is as compatible as possible with existing fertilizer, fertilizer infrastructure, and uh, doing that uh, in a way that is scalable and economically viable, even at the, at the smaller scale. And so we're looking for ideas, chemistry, but that don't have to be fully developed. But again, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, so the mass, mass and energy balance is necessary, at least conceptually. And uh, we're willing to... to uh, and they, uh, you know, looking at any level of technology development, as long as uh, nobody violates uh, some uh, law of thermodynamics. <laughs> and this is a challenge. Thank you. <laughs>